I'm Jen Lammers and I'm a general assignment reporter here at Fox 5. I come from a very small working class town in uh, Ohio, Dover, Ohio, 12,000 people, Northeast Ohio. I, for most people actually don't know where that is, so I just tell them I'm from Cleveland. <laughs> I have wanted to be a reporter and a writer since I was in second grade. <laughs> I walk in the newsroom every day and you never really know what to expect. What, what's great about working here is we're encouraged as reporters to take risks, to take chances and chase our stories and pitch new, exciting, fresh ideas. You flip to the different stations and you can almost bank on what you're going to see. <laughs> we come at it from a different angle. Check out the stories at the right for what's coming up at 5. That's what separates us from the rest of the pack here in New York City. A tale of two cities, L.A. shuts down its entire school system after receiving an anonymous threat. But in New York City, it was business as usual. Commissioner Bratton says city schools received a similar threat but quickly determined that it was a hoax. So why did Los Angeles officials take it so seriously? Dan Bowens talked to an expert about analyzing threats. He's in the newsroom now with some answers. Dan. Well, Jen and Steve, officials in Los Angeles. Gun control once again front and center on the third anniversary of the Newtown Massacre. State leaders are renewing their call for tighter restrictions on gun buyers. All right, that includes making sure people on the federal no-fly list cannot get their hands on weapons. Sharon Crowley here now with more. Sharon. NYPD had a record number of officers providing security for today's parade, and they sprang into action when a drone was spotted too close for comfort near the parade route. Dan Bowens tells us who was flying it and why. I'm Jennifer Lammers. Check out the stories at the right for what's coming up at 5. And segregated schools is a disturbing trend and a huge problem in our city. Tonight, a closer look at why some of New York's most diverse neighborhoods are also some of the worst offenders. What a new report is revealing, that's all coming up tonight at 5 o'clock. Well, a great meal is often a feast for the eyes as well as our taste buds. All right, see how one culinary star is changing the way we look at food. Plus, the Star Wars saga continues. We'll introduce you to the new faces of the franchise. You're watching Fox 5 News at 5. Some call her a self-made domestic goddess, and she is changing the way we look at food. All right, you've seen Kristen Seleni on Fox 5 before, but tonight see this rising culinary star in action as she gives us a chef's perspective of the New York restaurant scene. Since Which is right much now. better than a one-hit wonder. Yeah. One by wonder is a good thing. <laughs> that black mutts is intriguing to me. It has like the antioxidant properties that you were mentioning, right? It does. And you know yeah. what's so interesting? Because it still has that great creamy texture and consistency. Yes. And I love to bring in like a new culinary experience for my customers that are coming in. So the black mozzarella has been a special now in Boca di Bacco. And it has been, it's been really well received. So That's it's great. Yeah. And, you know, being a chef and having the restaurants, we always are curious to bring in new different products and new different concepts to see how how it's received before we right. really roll it out into right. the menu. You know, how willing are New York restaurant goers to be challenged in that way do you find? You know everyone wants to try something new yeah. and everyone yeah. wants to try the hot new ingredient. Right. So this is kind of this has been it for the season and it's really yeah. it's been a big hit. Yeah, any combinations that people should really sort of stay away from. You mentioned like the lobster and the cheese, maybe not a good idea. Right. right? I mean, traditionally, you know, in Italy, we really don't pair seafood and <laughs> cheese. So I really loved the combination of the different mozzarellas and then the prosciutto because it adds such a different dimension to the flavors. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. All You're right. Welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, Jen Lombers is in Flushing Meadows right now in Queens at the site of the U.S. Open. Uh, Jen, uh, do you know what they said? What happened? Hi, Ernie. Yes, as we know, the NYPD and the mayor are both trying to contact James Blake to offer an apology and to ask for his help in the investigation. And Commissioner Bill Bratton just told us that, yes, that contact was made, that Blake is willing to cooperate with police in the investigation over what happened during Wednesday's arrest. All right, a great story about overcoming adversity. A New Jersey boy with a passion for basketball returned to the court tonight following a double lung transplant. That is serious. Mm -hmm. At this time last year, Josh Fernandez could barely walk, but tonight, just months after receiving life-changing surgery, well, the 12-year-old was king of the court in front of his family and friends. Great to see. Jen Lammers has his very inspiring story. 
If you know Josh Fernandez, you know this wasn't just any introduction. I think it's really fun to be back and playing. Josh is 12 years old, and this is his first time playing a real basketball game. Not because he doesn't like basketball, he loves it. He's always wanted to play, but a chronic lung condition has held him back. The coach has been so good to him because he would let him play. He was struggling already with his breathing, but he would let him play three, four minutes. He was always part of the team. He always came to games with his uniform on and showed up as many practices as he could, practices as he could but he just, uh, he had oxygen. He had carried that in a knapsack. Um, and the boys would just help him. Josh needed new lungs, and in May, his family got the call. And with the help of 10 first responders who were ready at a minute's notice, he traveled to Philly for a transplant that would save his life. The emergency squad agreed to transport him all the way from home down to CHOP. As young as he is, Josh has gone through a lot. He spent his whole life sitting on the sidelines, not being able to do the kinds of things that other kids his age get to do all the time. But tonight, well, Tonight was different. Surrounded by his teammates, surrounded by his friends and his family, even the ones who took him to the hospital that day, Josh played basketball. And this time, he did it on his own. You're out here, you're doing such a great job. Are you, you gotta be proud of yourself, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. When he came back, uh, we hoped that. You know, he would be able to be kind of the way he used to be a little bit, and it ended up that he's so much stronger and so much more a part, actively a part of the team than, uh, than he ever was. For me as a mom, just to have him here alive, um, him being able to do what he likes, is priceless. This is only the first step for Josh. A lot of it is thanks to a fundraising page that's been set up to help him with his recovery. It's called Breathing New Life for Josh. And by the way, his team won tonight 41 to 24. From Chatham, New Jersey, Jennifer Lammers, Fox 5 News. Well, a Legionnaire survivor who got sick during a different outbreak earlier on in the year says that not enough was done to then to prevent people from being exposed. Fox 5's Jennifer Lammers spoke with this patient about his fight with the disease. I, I don't even know how I'm here. It's still tough for Ralph Maffa to even see the photos. This is him at the ICU where he spent almost four months, a far cry from what he looked like before. I was on 24 hour a day dialysis, uh, feed in tube, uh, trach. It took me a long time to, um, to accept the fact that I didn't know what was going on with me. Till I woke up. Mm -hmm. I thought it was the next day. And um, when I looked at my body, I realized uh, I had lost a third of my weight. Mafa was in a coma for a month. At that point, he weighed only 79 pounds. It was then that doctors diagnosed him with Legionnaire's disease. He's one of eight people who contracted the illness at Co-op City back in January. He was doing flooring work across the street from the cooling towers. Today, sitting here seven months after his ordeal, despite the daily struggles he faces, he says he still considers himself one of the lucky ones, especially when he thinks of the South Bronx, where the death toll from Legionnaire's disease continues to rise. This is not a joke. You know, um, it shut my organs down completely. You know, um, my prayers go out to every one of them because they don't even know what they're in for. In April, Maffa and his attorney, Stephanie O'Connor, filed suit against co-op's owners, claiming they knew about the Legionella bacteria in the cooling tower water, but didn't do what was needed to protect untold numbers of people who could have been exposed. That includes the duty to test, the duty to inspect, uh, to disinfect when needed. This is a travesty, really, for Mr. Maffa, what's happened to him, something that could have been avoided. And the more recent outbreak really brings it to the forefront that there has to be accountability. I believe this, you know, uh, nothing's impossible, mm -hmm. nothing. And the fact that I'm sitting here is a miracle. We reached out to the defendants named in that lawsuit against Co-op City, Marion Scott Real Estate and River Bay Corporation, but did not get a response. From the newsroom, Jennifer Lammers, Fox 5 News. Darian Antoine, back over to you. Jen, thank you.
chocolate. Is there anything in the world more decadent, delicious, and completely addictive? I met up with Mary Bell Lieberman of Mary Bell Chocolates. So tell me where you get all of this amazing, delicious chocolate. I first met with some women farmers in Honduras. You know, they grow the cacao bean. Yeah. And I buy from the farmers. You're going to be working with Chica. She's waiting for you upstairs. Let's go. Wonderful. Let's go. Tell me what you're doing over here. Okay, I'm tempering the chocolate right now. Yeah. Chocolate is high maintenance. You have to warm it up, cool it off, and then warm it up again to get exactly the right temperature. From the perfect temperature to the perfect weight, pouring our chocolate into chocolate bars. So now I, uh, I scoop this, yes. right? To the 35 grams. Okay, like like this. Yes. Ooh, is it okay if it gets like a little bit uh, gross? 35? Yes, 35. Does it have to be even or, or what? It has to be 35, yes. <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? It has to be exactly 35? Yes. Time to let these babies cool. To the average person, being around all this chocolate would be tempting. Chica, what's that over there? Luckily, I have willpower and don't give in to that kind of childish nonsense. Once the bars are cooled, they're cut into bonbons and dropped onto a conveyor belt, which turns out around 12,000 bonbons a day. It goes through this little tunnel here. Yes. And what does that do? This is cooling process. It okay. takes about 11 minutes after wow. you pass it. 11 minutes to go through that, that tunnel. Yeah. And then they come out over here. Yes. And this is where we package them, right? Yes, correct. Do you just like go gangbusters in here? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh, no. So now it's more coming. That one's facing the wrong way. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So you have to make it everything okay. same way. Oh, I'm failing, I'm failing, I'm failing right now. I'm overwhelmed right now. Oh no, that's not peeled. Oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot. Okay, Chica, so we spent the day together. It was wonderful. Um, why don't you give me a grade? How did I do? Um, I give you a C. C for chocolates, right? Yeah, why not? Hmm. Well, as you can see, it was definitely one of the easiest assignments of the whole series. And in case you missed any of them, you can watch them again during my Gen Network special, which is this Friday at 1030. Definitely had a couple of Willy Wonka moments walking in there and seeing everyone working at the factory. Uh, it was kind of crazy. I mean, did you get the sense that you were only there for a day, so obviously, like, you're trying to sneak as much chocolate as possible, but could you tell that like they were sick of chocolate or do you love it as much I no matter how long them you work there? If, if th this changes the way they look at mm -hmm. chocolate, they said it makes them appreciate it even more. Wow. Yeah. around it all the time. Okay, so yeah. so far, which has been <laughs> Your favorite job, which has been the toughest? The toughest was cleaning out the fish tanks I, yeah. at the, the Staten tank. Island Ferry. Right. Not the stalls. Okay. Because, well, it's cramped spaces. Yes, of course. Uh, and the, uh, I mean, the, the most challenging I would, would be the beekeeping. Because oh, wow. I'm yeah. terrified That's scary, of right. bees. Right. Yeah, right. for sure. Yeah. Oh, That's wow. high stakes. Different kind of level of terror involved there. Indeed. Okay, so yeah, we'll yeah. sort of see this compilation on You'll Friday. You'll see them all on Friday, exactly. Right. At 10.30 after 10 the 10.30. Thank you so much, Good Jen. Good deal. Thank you, Thank you Jen.